Hey, what's up guys, it's Shorty. Welcome back. In today's quick video tutorial, I'm gonna explain using multi-rack in a show, using snapshots, MIDI control, hot plugins, and a brief description about show and configuration modes. So our sessions are comprised of multiple racks, and even if we're using the same plugins on different songs, there still might be some variations required between them, um, such as beats per minute, EQ moves, compression settings, reverb settings, and so on. So for that reason, we're gonna to wanna to create and save different snapshots for different songs, or even for different parts within the same song. Now, to do that, we'll open our snapshots pane. We can just click the snapshot button in the top bar. And on the right-hand side, we'll see up to 1,000 snapshots. Now, on the right-hand side, you'll see I already made it a couple of snapshots just for the purposes of the video. Um, you'll see as I flip between them, you can see the state of some of the plugins changing. Now, this is convenient when we're working in a live setting, moving between songs, uh, rather than having to reach for each individual plugin to make changes on the fly. Uh, as we're going through sound check or as we're going through shows and making changes and getting things really dialed, once we're happy with what we have here, we can save it as a snapshot. So for instance, you know, here's, here's PC dubstep. So let's take a look at the reverb on that one and just kind of note where my settings are. Now, there's a part in this song where I'll actually pull the reverb out. So rather than doing that manually on the fly, you know, it's, it's the same every time. Um, rather than doing it manually on the console or manually for more than multi-rack, I can just save the change as a preset. So if I move to the next preset, you'll see I've bypassed the reverb. Um, and then moving forward from there, you know, say, oh, next song, okay, Festival Friends. We'll see we've got some different reverb here again. Now, I can make those changes across the board with every single plugin in my session just by saving it as a snapshot and moving between them throughout the show. So it's huge time savings. Uh, it's less for you to worry about and do in real time as the engineer. So just as an example, to create a snapshot, let's say I'm engaging these for the next song. Let's say the next song is Midnight. So I've made some changes. Yeah, okay, I've got the reverb where I want it. Maybe I need to make a bit of an EQ move. Um, and okay, now I'm happy with where that is for that song. So let's say that song is Midnight. Uh, now that I've got my rack set up, I'll store as an empty slot in five. We'll name that for the song and it's in our preset menu. So now you'll see our plugin state. We had brought these back into being active, took them out of bypass. And if we toggle between our snapshots, you'll see it's recalling those states. Now, if we want to eliminate one, all we have to do is click and delete it. To add more, we can just store up to a thousand. Now, our multi-rack snapshots can be remotely recalled via MIDI. So this enables us to, for example, switch between multi-rack snapshots directly from a console or keyboard or other MIDI controller. So to do this, we're gonna open Preferences, MIDI. We'll wanna select our MIDI device. Everything related to this that you're gonna need, if you even need it, is gonna be in the manual. So if you run up against a wall and setting up your MIDI, just pop the manual open, go to this section, it'll walk you right through it. It's fairly basic. In addition to recalling snapshots via MIDI, we can also map our MIDI device or console to control other functions of multi-rack and plugins. In order to do that, we'll click on the Open Editor button in the bottom of our window. And this is the multi-rack remote controller editor. If you're using a MIDI controller, you can assign all hardware knobs and faders to the multi-rack functions available on this page. If you don't want to use a MIDI hardware controller, you can use your computer keyboard and assign key to functions in multi-rack. So here you'll see I'm not, I don't have a console connected, so I'm just using the computer keyboard. I can select a function and just press a keyboard button and assign it to that function. So now my one and two would be previous snapshot and next snapshot. And we can do this with recalling hot plugins and navigating between racks, plugin controls, etc. So now you can see that I can use my hotkeys to move between snapshots. Now, another cool thing we can do here is we can right click and add these as hot snapshots. So if we wanted to be able to navigate quickly between these on the fly, rather than previous and next, uh, we can do it based on what we had set up in the in the editor. 
Another handy hot feature is hot plugins where we can assign plugins uh, much like with the snapshots. Uh, we just assign a plugin to a slot and that plugin will be accessible quickly and easily without the need for navigation. And we can also map that to uh, actual controls with the editor. Uh, same way we did with the snapshots, we can do that with the plugins so we can jump back and forth and get at these things quick and easy as we're working through a show. One last thing I wanted to show real quick was just basically the setup and show modes. So under setup, we can affect everything in real time. Uh, if we put it into show mode, so once we're ready to go, now I can't accidentally drag a plugin out of a rack. I can't accidentally change the plugin. So it's, I can't add plugins. It's gonna, what this will do is it'll prevent us from doing anything that's gonna cause audio dropouts. Um, it just puts us in a show mode where now we can't reconfigure our racks, but everything we need is set up, ready to go, and it's just gonna, it's just gonna prevent us from making mistakes. So these were just a few examples of how you can improve your workflow with multi-rack. There's a bunch of other tricks. Uh, you know, each engineer is gonna have his or her way of working. You know, just do whatever works for your workflow, but play with all these features. All these things are great. These are all gonna save you a lot of time, make it a better experience, make things easier on you. And they're all very, very, very intuitive things. Uh, once you've done it a couple of times, you're gonna get really comfortable with it and it's gonna be a great experience. And that's it guys. Thanks again. This was Shorty with Table Syrup and that wraps up this series of quick video tutorials on Multi-Rack SoundGrid. Thanks for watching. For more information, visit www.waveslive.com.